Today I'm going to explain a phenomenon in the original Animal Crossing that is pretty rare and has actually only happened in a few documented cases. If this phenomenon happens in your game, you will end up with a town full of paper airplanes that have a high likelihood of crashing the game entirely, and can even render your save file unplayable. To explain this further, I need to talk about the GameCube's memory in relation to Animal Crossing, and a common error in computer engineering called a bit flip. To start, you may have heard before that all data within computing is, in its most basic form, stored entirely as zeros and ones. This is true and is known as binary and is a very basic yet effective method of storing data. In fact, this method actually works so well it's been the standard since basically the start of computing. In terms of computer memory storage, engineers store data by including millions of tiny transistors and capacitors in a special chip that can either be charged or discharged with electricity. Think of these capacitors as special cells connected to a light bulb. When charged with electricity, these cells light up and represent a 1, and when not charged, these cells are dim and represent a 0. In memory terms, each of these cells are called a bit, and 8 of these bits make up something called a byte, as in the things that make up a megabyte or a gigabyte, which I'm pretty sure you've probably heard of before. Now picture millions of these cells all packed together with a special controller that can read and change the charge of these cells. Let's also say we want to store an image of a cat, for example, onto a section of these cells. To do this, every color of every pixel is decompiled into a binary number, and then the respective capacitors are either charged or discharged to match these values exactly, effectively storing the information to be read and recompiled later. This is, in essence, how modern computer memory actually works, and a well-engineered system can hold these electrical charges for years on end. This is why things like SD cards still work and hold the exact data you saved on them even after years of not using them. Also, as a side note, some older games, such as cartridge-based ones on the N64 or Game Boy, actually use a built-in battery to store their save data and keep their capacitors charged. This is the reason why nowadays, years after their manufactured date, these batteries are running dry within the cartridge and need to be replaced to save game data again. Now, back on the topic of Animal Crossing, the GameCube of course runs off of disks and requires an external memory card to hold save data, which is engineered to last much longer than battery-based saves. This system works similarly to the capacitor layout we just talked about, and for reference, the largest GameCube memory card had around 64 million capacitors and transistors. Now, this may sound like a lot, but this is actually truly nothing compared to today's standards. For reference, the biggest 2TB SD cards today have over 16.5 trillion capacitors, which is this number, or about 258,000 times the amount of a GameCube memory card. Anyways, the important thing is you understand how the GameCube stores memory and how this memory is represented as either 0 or 1. This is important in Animal Crossing because everything in the game is stored using special IDs which are then converted into binary and written into memory, similar to the picture example we did earlier. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Villagers, items, ground tiles, dates, characters, basically everything is stored in this manner. And since Animal Crossing is so reliant on this data being stored accurately, this game is more susceptible to a natural error in computer science called a bit flip. See, due to many different causes, a capacitor in memory may either become charged or uncharged seemingly randomly. When a capacitor that was supposed to be charged becomes uncharged, or vice versa, this value is essentially flipped, hence the name bit flip. In Animal Crossing, if one of the stored data bits gets flipped, it can have drastic consequences to your save file. Most likely, a flip bit in memory will result in your save file being unplayable with KK Slider showing up and telling you that your town data has been corrupted. The only option from this point forward is to delete the town or somehow try to recover your data by tampering with the memory card. However, on rare instances, and if you get just lucky enough, a bit flip can occur that doesn't actually corrupt your save, but instead spawns an unused item called the paper airplane in your town. This paper airplane is left over in the game files and does not actually appear anywhere in the game normally. This spawning occurs because all of the empty grids in your town are stored with an internal hex ID of 0000, and the paper airplane item has a hex ID of 8000. When converted to binary for storing, you can see that these two values have a mismatch of one single bit. So all it takes is one of your empty plot grids in your town to flip this bit once to spawn this paper airplane. While this is seemingly pretty cool to get an unused item in your game, this paper airplane item is actually very evil. See, pressing A over the plane makes it disappear as if you picked it up, 
and there is actually working code allowing you to throw the item and control it by pressing Z and flicking the control stick. However, be careful when you do this, because once you do, you are softlocked and stuck forever as you cannot move or open any menus. Pressing any button on the controller simply does nothing, and you have to reset the game entirely to get your game back to normal. Further, every time you enter the acre that the paper airplane is in and reload the overworld, this paper airplane is, for some reason, programmed to duplicate and to spread to other empty plots. This process occurs endlessly and exponentially, and eventually crashes the game. Now, saving the game in this state with too many paper airplanes on the ground will render your game virtually unplayable as it will lag indefinitely and continue to spawn paper airplanes if you reload the overworld. Now, these paper airplanes can be permanently destroyed by dropping items on them, but if you don't handle this soon enough, your save will soon become overrun. So, in essence, by simply playing the game normally and for reasons outside of your own control, you can actually randomly run into this humorous game-breaking glitch. However, it's important to note that this is actually extremely rare, and there are only a couple of documented cases of this bitflip occurring. But, while rare, this is still the more common bitflip to occur, since there are so many empty plots in the game to potentially begin the corruption. But how does this even happen in the first place? What even causes a bitflip in the GameCube? Well, most famously, bitflips can occur due to cosmic rays in the atmosphere produced by the sun, which can cause electrical interference due to the high amount of radiation present. Now, this is a real issue for things like airplanes, which need to be designed to avoid this. But while this sounds cool, this is most likely not what is happening when a bitflip occurs in the case of Animal Crossing for the GameCube. Rather, bitflips on the GameCube most likely occur due to poorly programmed hardware in which excess use of the console actually wears down the capacitors. In some cases, poor temperature control or ventilation can also result in heat from the console impacting the electrolytes inside capacitors. This explains why bitflips have been documented to occur by players with years of playtime on the same console, or by speedrunners who basically run the game all day. Now, I definitely do not fault Nintendo's engineers or anything for this flaw, as I personally have never had any issues in over 15 years of playing the same GameCube, and this is a phenomenon that impacts every computer. Regardless, as we saw, this funny quirk can quickly turn devastating in Animal Crossing if you're unlucky enough. Anyways, hopefully you found this video interesting or learned something fun. Thanks for watching.